Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Jeff Salzman, here tonight with Decker Kunov of the Integral Center here in Boulder, Colorado. And happy to have you with us. We're going to be videotaping this as well tonight and doing some stuff with some of the video. Uh, as always, uh, with the Daily Evolver, we're going to just look at what's unfolding in the world in real time. You know, we watch the TV and we hear the arguments and we're all plugged in. I mean, just in an unprecedented way, just plugged into the flow of information and, and basically intelligence that is um, pouring into the human and world system and continuing to move us uh, evolutionarily, often in ways that are uh, imperceptible, uh, often in ways that are deeply misunderstood, in ways that we reflexively fear. Uh, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about, you know, we can talk about all of it, uh, from the presidential elections to the Medicare, we can talk about whatever we want. Uh, but we're going to start with the employment situation because it's just so fundamental to um, actually not only the life of the country and the world in certain ways, there are problems that we're facing globally, but also it's something that's up for most of us because we're making our way in this world and we want to contribute something to this world. And we know that we're in a new world that is you know, ever new and ever evolving. And how is it that we chart our course in um, a world where you know, some of the basic rules have changed? Like you know, young people are going to live to be 150, for instance. Um, all material wealth will be created by robots. Uh, we don't have to work in the ways that we thought we did. That work is actually uh, moving into an expression of our own essence and creativity rather than being a cog in the machine of the creation of material wealth. These are the mega trends that are happening that in any given period, as we look ahead and say, so what do I do now, next? It's, you know, kind of confusing. So we're going to start with some of that tonight. And, uh, and I invited Decker up here because uh, that's become an issue that is so upfront for people, particularly people, uh, younger people, who are, you know, trying to figure out how they're going to, you know, give their gift. And also get their gift so that, you know, people want to live a good life. People want to live a life where they're able to get the goodies and travel and be part of the game. And how do we do that? And so the Integral Center uh, is uh, one of the things that uh, we're doing here is um, reviving the Integral Incubator, which is something that we did for a couple of years here, where we would bring people in for a week and help them in a very structured way to work on a specific project in their life uh, that was really going to move the ball for them. And we've revived that. We're going to do uh, a whole sort of new rethought incubator starting in October. And Decker's uh, really leading the charge in the redesign. And I'm thrilled about that. So Decker, do you want to just sort of share some opening observations about what sure. we're doing and yeah. what we're seeing? Uh, well, we're supporting in a structured way, but also sealing off all the exits so that we actually uh, incubate. I just love that you named it incubator because uh, it's a lot of it is, this is one of the things I love about Integral anyway, but it's not just uh, some new distinction or some new uh, insight necessary, but also applying what we already have available level by level. and sealing it up so that uh, we actually start creating the impact we want to start creating. But mm -hmm. um, I'm just still absorbing everything you were just riffing on and uh, an oldie but goodie in Integral too is there's no uh, paradise to get back to. It's not like we screwed up and there's not like we only screwed up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's both and uh, uh, th there's only further to go while learning 
for uh, applying the wisdom of each level that we've come through. And I think that really applies in the, this conversation about not just vocation, but contribution and, uh, and how we we're going to sustain ourselves and sustain our families and all that. That yeah. there's something new coming yeah. that hopefully is informed by the best of every stage we've yeah. come through. Yeah. And that's just basic to integral theory in general. And in fact, we can walk this up a little bit and see what we actually have to work with from an integral perspective. Um, and we can see that there's been a radical rethinking of work and vocation um, every step of the way. Mm -hmm. um, in, of course, the early hunter-gatherer societies, the idea of work was just you know, getting calories, staying warm. Uh, having sex, having babies, keeping them safe to viability. You know, everybody was dead by 24 anyway and crippled by seven. You know, I mean, it was just, life was nasty, brutish, and short. This is the, you know, cliche of this time. So the idea of work, it's like a little bit just above instinct at that stage of the game. And then we move into a tribal stage of development where there's a differentiation of work between perhaps men and women or different warrior types and, you know, there's a sort of a distribution and a differentiation of work that is, again, um, organic, not really thought through in the sense that one of the markers of tribal consciousness in general is that actually the ego hasn't even really come online yet. I mean, it's hard for us <laughs> who are, you know, poisoned by ego to imagine such a state. But uh, again, people didn't, in tribal cultures, didn't worry about self-expression, particularly. They were interested in tribal expression. They were sort of, the, the ego was held by the tribe itself. And just things happened naturally uh, in mm -hmm. terms of what role you played and so forth, and at the end of days, you were expected to get on the ice flow and float out into the sea, and of course, you know, that's how that worked, because nobody had, you know, didn't have a lot of extra calories <laughs> around. And there's something uh, alive about it, yeah, like when absolutely. I've been traveling through India or, you know, the cultures uh, in Africa where... It is, yeah, it's not, we're not interfacing with some idea of what we're supposed to do or what this is leading to, but just responding to what actually viscerally matters now. I, I'm moved by that when I'm, I'm not, I'm not striving for that in my own life, but I, there's something in, in both those levels that I think uh, can get lost yeah. and be reintegrated. Absolutely. That, uh, that I, a lot of people I've supported around vocation or that comes up in the incubator is not just about getting those files, like this actually this week, life is better because I actually got this done or got that book, those chapters of that book finished, but also drilling into uh, being in a uh, container where we're dialed into what matters. And so there's, there's what we get done in a week, but there's also the state that we're in as we go back out in our lives yeah. that I, I actually am envious sometimes of even in poverty where the food's being shipped in. And those kids just like, woo, dancing and giving, you know, hugging and thanking everybody. I'm like, man, they're happier than I've been. They're hungrier than I've been in a long time, but they're happier than yeah. I've been in a long time. There's yeah. really a wisdom in, the, in every level. Yeah. So we want to see that from an integral perspective, always, we want to bring what is the best of this? And so, you know, what is the best of that? There's a deep community. We all know what it is. Isn't it great to work in a team that's really clicking and everybody knows what they're doing and there's a certain X factor of communication and connection and intimacy and, nice. you know, that's, we want that. When, when a breakdown happens, everyone just knows who to look at, look to, like, oh, there's the MacGyver. Everyone knows, and if you're the MacGyver for that area and everyone looks at you, you're like, yeah. Yep, that's what I do. And just everyone's known and yeah. supported for their gift inside of that community. Yeah. Is, yeah. And you're relating that with Magenta. Yeah, absolutely. Because we nice. want that deep connection that, and even being initiated. I mean, one of the, one of the markers of this uh, culture is initiation. People are initiated into new stages of their life. 
And so you never wonder where you're at, you know, isn't that cool? And, and so we want, again, the best of that brought forth into our new world. And, you know, one of the critiques of uh, particularly postmodern American workers and particularly millennials, uh, which is my generation's kids, and these are the, I guess, what, basically under 30, is that they really demand to be heard and seen. And, you know, they really want their work to be meaningful, or they just as soon live at home with mom and dad and, until that happens. <laughs> and, you know, to them, I say, right on, actually. I say, you're actually, your demands, your, your, your spoiled bratness is actually moving the ball because we all want work like that, especially when robots are able to actually create the material wealth, uh, it just, which is, again, you know, just happening so fast. The, the New York Times this week, you know, when they do these big three and four page stories in the New York Times that, you know, something's happening. And this was, this week it was about robotics and just how robotics are is radically different now than they were five years ago. And that we have robots that are putting wires and holes that are you, unseen by the naked eye, that human beings could not do that sort of thing. And it's just, wow. this is good news. On the left-hand quadrant side, there's less and less interest in products and more interest in the experience yes. anyway. Yeah. And on the right-hand quadrant, whatever material stuff is relevant is uh, pushing a button more and more. That's yeah. Well, there's, yeah. a, there's the old joke about um, the autopilot in the airplane. And so the, they're developing these airplanes now so that you just need a pilot and a dog. And the only purpose of the dog is to bite the pilot if he touches anything. You know, yes. So it's kind of like that. Yeah, and I mean, we have some of our <laughs> some of our staff from uh, oh from London from England. I've, I'm hearing conversation about uh, whether someone needs to have a job. Like, what about unemployment? What, what about how do we motivate people to have a job at all? Like, are we just gonna be lazy? And versus, no. What if people have basic housing is just guaranteed? It may not be like oceanfront or something, but uh, those things are just handled. Uh, in what way do people contribute more? Yeah. And does creati creativity flow more when it's not be so that you don't starve yeah. or be yeah. homeless or have a better reputation or something, but all that stuff is starting to be handled? Yeah. What, does that create laziness or does that create massive contribution? It, these are the issues that we have to deal with. And this, this is the, these are the issues of mm. the presidential campaign. That's one of the big issues mm. is which direction are we going to lean for the next four years? Uh, but we table that and come back to it because uh -huh. that's really important. So just to, just to get it all on the table, so we move up to the warrior stage. And this is where, in terms of work, you do whatever the warlord tells you to do. And, you know, basically it would be some version of um, peasant farming uh, where, uh, the, of course, the warlord or eventually the king and that's still in this stage of development. This is where, you know, tribes eventually melded together and, and uh, got more and more complex. And we moved in from this sort of indigenous magical tribe to this great mythical tribe like Genghis Khan, you know, this sort of thing. And so it was, you know, basically a pillage environment. And you were expected to do your part. And the king could come and take your horses the king could come and take your crops. The king could come, could come and take your daughter uh, or son. And, you know, this is the l a long, um, miserable era of human history that still exists in certain parts of the world but is quickly being, you know, uh, colonized by the next stage of development. Uh, well, actually, let's stop for a moment there and say, what do we like about that stage? <laughs> What do we, actually, what do we like about that, that warlord stage in terms of em, employment and just keeping the machine running? Is there an efficiency yeah, there's a certain efficiency about here's what you do. I mean, I, I say, I'm the leader, I say what we're going to do and everybody does it. That's efficient. Pyramids may not have been created 
yeah. without that kind of efficiency. Exactly. And we notice even there's different things that come from that. So when I'm going to be a blacksmith and my father and my grandfather and his father and they were blacksmiths, then actually I sort of just sort of naturally honor my elders because they actually do know more than I do about just the rhythms of nature and, you know, they've, they've just had more of the same experiences that I have, so they're worth listening to. When we get up into these stages of development, like now, my mother and father, they couldn't get their, re, begin to relate to what I was doing. And, and, and so the challenge for me now is to sort of question myself is that what's going on with my kids or my peers' kids or the kids of today that I'm just not oh, getting my arms around. And, and I actually know that there's something. This is part of the shadow. I mean, I know that I don't know something. I don't know what it is I don't know, but there's, a, there's something going on with these kids that is really interesting, and I'm very curious about it. And as an evolutionary, I can sort of stay ahead of the game a little better than I might otherwise, but, you know, I don't know. Just a question I have there about that. So anyway, <laughs> so you know, one of the things that's good about this stage of development is it's juicy. There's somebody who's putting a stake in the ground and saying, this is the territory we're going to conquer. It's, it's a place for, there, there's something about a strong leader that's still magnetic. That it's, it's like they talked about Steve Jobs, that he would bend reality. He was a reality distortion uh, machine yeah. uh -huh. in that whenever he was in the room, his just sheer belief and his sheer commitment and his, the sheer magnitude of his of intelligent and talent was riveting to people and organized people. And we actually know this in the integral world because of, we, we have a similar figure actually, and that's Ken Wilber. Ken is a giant. And Ken knows who he is. He knows what he has to offer. He knows what he's offered. And I gotta tell you, you know, that I spent a lot of my career building my own business, a very successful business, and, you know, a lot of people, and I was in that leadership position, and it was delicious to be a minion of Ken Wilber for the three, four years yes. that I did that. Where I did, I woke up in the morning, and my job was to do his bidding. Yes. Within reason, because Ken never asked us to do anything that wasn't reasonable and moving the ball forward. And I was happy, even when... He was, you know, with this kind of a leader, even bad decisions work. It's really true. You, you don't expect them to, to be right all the time. Nobody is. But the sheer force of let's just move in some direction together is, transcends often the actual um, decision itself. So this is a powerful strata of our own development that we want to stay in touch with as we move forward. And we, we want to be able to kick a little ass, as, the, as George H.W. Yes. George Bush once infamously said uh, about poor Geraldine Ferraro. But anyway, that's a whole other story. No, I'm glad you said that. That was <laughs> my first application of Integral was in uh, training in the military. Really? Uh, where red wins. Yeah. And it is. I'm just glad you said that because it feels really good when someone knows what they're doing. Yeah. It actually is annoying for them to check in with me all the time. Uh, it's, there's something in context when they know what they're doing. It's really, there's a gift in red. Like, yeah. let's, just, let's just nail this. Yeah, indeed. And, and at the incubator even, we work to get people in touch with, what are you here to do? You know, what are you really excited about and on fire about and not really interested in a consensus about? You know? Uh, and so, anyway, that's, it's, an, it's an important stage of development. Miss, Miss Loretta. Um, from, a, from a visual perspective, um, it was very colorful uh, and very sensual in mm -hmm. that way. Uh, a lot of texture. Yes. Yes, yes. It is very sensual and it has a lot of texture, this stage of development. 
You know, I even think of, this is a little off topic maybe, but Terry, you and I were talking about this last night. People living in this sort of intentional community uh, of Israelis, uh, very um, uh, fundamentalist. In fact, probably more this stage of development. In fact, let's just move to this stage of development because this, this story actually really relates more to that. And so from this warlord where there's a leader and there's followers and it's all very clear and we're moving in a certain direction, we move into then this amber traditional stage. And the amber traditional stage is what? It's very orderly. We, have, we make plans. We make sure that we got our ducks in a row. Uh, everybody uh, has a place and everybody has a job. And it begins to become far more complex, far more differentiated. Uh, cultures become, you know, th 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 this kind of culture could only go so far. And then we move, when we move into traditional cultures, of course, also characterized by fundamental religion, uh, by nationalism, uh, this kind of thing, uh, it can be also very, very uh, powerful. Uh, yeah, also characterized by aqueducts and yes. road systems. And yes, road systems, infrastructure, um, obedience, Still a lot of obedience, still a leader, um, and, um, and also has a certain texture to it because even in this system, we don't necessarily want to stick out. We, it's, there's a conformity to it. There's, I mean, when we think about um, how it shows up in our culture uh, among social conservatives, there's a sense of... Uh, everybody, you know, we're, we're sitting at home on a Sunday afternoon and grandma's holding the baby in the rocking chair and mom's at the stove and dad's cleaning his gun. <laughs> you know, kind of makes you nostalgic, um, doesn't it, Decker? I have a, a plane <laughs> ticket heading into that world <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah, that, that, that world. Straight to the Ozarks. <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that, that world's still there. And there's something about it that, you know, as integralists, um, boy, if we don't really get the beauty of that stage of development where everybody knows who they are. Now, you don't want to be gay. You don't want to be black. You, don't wanna, you know, you don't want to be in the outs. God knows. But when you're in, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. it, it is. There's a certain reliability to it. And there's a, there's a there's a, a baseline. And a richness. And a richness to it. Great Uncle Donnie is like, yeah, this, this house you're in right now, it, was, it actually was across the holler over there. We brought it over. Right. Yeah, grandma <laughs> yeah. and grandpa. You could still walk over. You might, why, you might see yourself a deer. Yep. Or a snake. Or a varmint. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized that if it's not a deer and it's not a snake... <laughs> Then it, everything else is a varmint, right. <laughs> <laughs> and that, there's something simple about that. Yeah. Actually, like yeah. either you're hunting it or you're avoiding it, or it's, it's a varmint. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. And and from a you know from a business perspective or from a professional perspective at this stage of the game, you know what this uh, stage brings for us is that you know we, it's orderly. We have systems mm -hmm. that we follow. People don't draw outside of the lines, you know? There's something to be said for that. There's a time and there's a place for that. Yes. And we want to, as integral practitioners, be able to be comfortable in that milieu when it's called for. Sometimes we might have a client who thinks that way. Or there might actually just be a stage in even the development of this place here, Robert. You know, just getting systems. Yeah. Where everybody actually <coughs> does have to follow them. It's like, I mean, for people up here, it's like, what are you, you know, you're, you know, you're suffocating me. I, like, I've, precisely. <laughs> 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 Until we bend you to our will. I mean, we it has to happen to some degree. I just kept looking over at him, think, just glad we're, I'm just getting how postmodern two levels up. I've heard how it erodes, this will actually erode out the best of, traditional and just getting that I'm remembering because you know great uncle Dale his brother they, they built a boat dock over in Beaver Creek and I mean that's that structure was was the 
goodness and aliveness for when we had a Sunday lunch was like a family reunion for most people. There's like 100 people there. And what do you do with all these kids? But we were, I'm, I was catching crickets and there would be an old hook somewhere and we'd get a stick and we were catching fish and feeding family yeah. at like eight yeah. or younger. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know many kids who've gotten to actually feel that useful and part of their family system. It's, there's something that can be lost there. Deeply satisfying yeah. to do that. I'm so glad that I'm, I'm benefiting yeah. from this talk. I don't know how you guys are doing, but I'm benefiting yeah. from this talk. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, and we actually, you know, one of the other things that we, we bring from here is that it's not about standing out. It's about just being a good citizen. It's about being a good man or a good woman and a good mother and a good father and a good member of the community and to be supportive. And there's something, there's a lesson in that for us. For, us, for those of us who think that we need to be moving mountains, we need to be sparkling, we need to be creating something new, we need to stand out, that maybe we actually need to lower the bar a little bit. Maybe we need to lower the bar. Maybe we need to just say, maybe I just want to be a good person and lead a good life, and I don't have to be special. You know, at least that's worth trying on, isn't it? Because we're so geared to be special. And we'll get to that, because it's important to be special, too. But it's also important to not be special. It's really important to not be special. And sometimes a relief. And, some t and often a relief. <laughs> Very often a deep relief. Yeah. Right? So... Then we move up to the next stage, which is orange and modern. And this is where, of course, not being special begins to feel suffocating and stultifying. And I'm tired of sitting in rows. And I'm tired of just being a good person. And I'm tired of this whole you know, good and evil thing, frankly, if you want to know the truth <laughs> of the matter. And I'm ready to move on. And so we decide that the world is not about being obedient to a transcendent uh, authority, which is very much this, God or Dharma or something, uh, that actually the world is knowable. And I can get in there and I can experiment mm -hmm. and I can analyze and I can use logic and I can break the rules and I actually can be special. And I can create something that, and, and, I, and not, only, not only can I be special, but we realize at this stage of the game that I am special. That there's never been another one just like me in all of time and space. And there never will be again one. There'll never be another Decker ever again. You know, that's something really. That's a realization. There's a capital R realization to that. Because... You know, when you get that, it's like, I don't have any choice, but I have to express this. I mean, there's just an, an imperative that comes online with that realization. It's part of God's will. Thank you, God, for that. And so, you know, and we know we want this in our new integral realization where we, we remember, we want the best of all of this as we move into a, more of an integral space. And so we do want... Um, to have a career where we're creating something new. Right? And a lot of the stuff you were talking about with robots and a lot of that is the highest levels of modern still, I'm imagining. Yeah. Still uh, maximizing and not Efficiencies. assuming. Efficiencies. Yeah. Yeah. And we want mm. that. We, we want to be efficient. We want to automate. We want to modernize. We want to create things with a minimal of, the minimum of effort. You know, for the most part, there's things that, you know, there's exceptions to that, of course, you know, where we want to actually knit something by hand occasionally, just so that we, or build that dock. You know, we were talking about, I know that. I know that mm -hmm. feeling if I built that dock. Especially if you'd built it, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing more, I mean, that's as deeply satisfying as Howard Rourke building his skyscraper. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it just is. There's something about that. So anyway, we, we want all that. And what's alive for me on that level, I guess we're most familiar with that level already, but yeah. uh, uh, even mainstream, we've already, the center of gravity has already moved beyond that, and yet 
modern is still evolving, like where that one is still going. What if all of the levels could still be going, still be enriching yeah. the way the way modern is? Yeah, I think they I think they can be. Yes. And at Integral, we actually deliberately want to reanimate and be reanimated by um, these earlier stages. Good. And um, and and you know and, and yet. The downside of this is that, um, well, we can see it in our politics now. Um, <clears throat> this is basically people who have a, uh, uh, often a religious belief in the private sector. A religious belief in the power of freedom and individuality. And that everybody is their, is their own agent. And that we don't, we want to, um, break the shackles of these earlier stages, where, again, even at this stage of development, if you look at traditional or, you know, the traditional cultures now, uh, you know, the, the government, if you will, whether it's the religion or the king or whatever it is, uh, you just really can't do whatever it is you want to do. And so this idea of, of, of human rights, of that I am my own free agent, uh, get your hands off of me, uh, this is an animating energetic of the, um, of the secular right, particularly, and of the um, free marketeers. And it's powerful. And we need to, as, as integralists, especially as we engage the political landscape, we want to be able to, when we hear like a Paul Ryan talking about freedom and liberty and and you know, getting government off of our back, you know, they're actually not trying to annoy us <laughs> with that kind of talk. They are annoying us, of course, but they're not trying to. They actually believe it. And you know, we have to sort of get behind in, into their body and you know, belly and eyes and see what an amazing achievement of humanity it was for the individual to say, no, you're not sovereign, I am. Get your fucking hands off of me. Huge, huge stage of development that we have to deeply respect or we're just not going to be able to deal with people intelligently, right? So, but, you know, eventually we see the downside of this which is, you know, ecological disaster, um, a sort of a mindless consumerism, uh, you know, definitely a, a collapse into the right-hand quadrants. This is very much scientific materialism here where, you know, religion is seen as superstition and spirituality is sort of thrown out the window. Now, of course, you know, in politics, it's all mixed up. So, you know, we basically have the, the Republicans here and the Democrats here. We split this meme. Uh, the um, business people go here. A lot of them are very secular, like Donald Trump, those guys. You know, they're secular, but they're still with the Republicans and sort of making an uneasy alliance with the religious people, the Rick Santorums. And then we have uh, the academics, um, the scientists. They tend to be the, they tend to go Republic, or Democrat. So that's how that breaks down. And so then we have um, the uh, next stage of development, which is um, the stage where, in terms of work and career, we actually want to make a difference. We want to serve. Hmm. And that's a wonderful thing. It's an amazing thing. And it comes online naturally when we have enough of our material needs met. When, you, when we have enough to eat, and when we have a roof over our head, and we have a certain reliable baseline of, you know, calories and all of that good stuff, then we're free to, this is just basically Maslow, we're basically free to think about the quality of life, um, how we're treating each other, uh, the people who have been left behind. You know, this meme tends to divide the world into winners and losers. This meme divides the world into saints and sinners. This meme divides the world into predator and prey. And Green's job is to go back and rehabilitate 
the losers, the sinners, and the prey. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? That we develop, naturally develop that way? It seems like a natural, like if you really follow orange, keep seeing it through, green happens, just even from a very selfish place. Because, uh, yeah, it's so inspiring to me. Like, oh, the great play goes on, and you get to contribute a verse. Like, that sounds like orange, the, like the best of orange. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then after a while, I was like, okay, great. What's my verse going to be? And after a while, you can get high on that for a little while, and it's like, well, who gives a shit? If it's not, if it's just whatever I'm making up, and it's not in relationship with anyone else, if it's not encount encountering impact yeah. and contribution both ways, uh, it, I don't know, maybe <laughs> from reincarnation perspective, maybe a couple of lifetimes you can get off on mm -hmm. being the winner. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I just, yeah, I see how these levels naturally uh, hatch out of each other. Yeah. And then if you really want to have that American dream, green starts to emerge. Yeah. Like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be real rewarding to the degree that yeah. we're in this together. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, and, you know, so we, we want that. We want a, all of us want a career at this stage of the game where we want to be doing work where we have all of what we talked about including I want to be expressing myself, I want to be moving the ball, I want to be creating something new, I want it to be exciting, I want to be growing. And then I also, I have to serve. If, I, if I'm not making a better world, it's just not enough, actually, to just get richer. It just isn't. It's not enough to just make money. Now, for this stage, it is. It's like you said, you can go probably several lifetimes just getting rich. Uh, or whatever the equivalent would be, just getting excellent. Uh, if you were, but if you were still, if you were still comfortable with, with that level, we wouldn't be in this building right now. That's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh -huh. You know, it became I, because I did. I, you know, I had my orange phase that was very fruitful, and you know, it's good old Peggy Lee. Is that all there is? <laughs> you know, making money, really, and mm -hmm. traveling, and you know, having stuff, and. And it, it got to the point where I'd be having boxes delivered, and it's like, I have to open that fucking box, and there's these peanuts, and, you know, I, I'm just like, it's, it's, the whole it was, the thing was, you know, and, and I'd be in these, I'd drive past these big houses, and I'd see these people, and I'd literally feel sorry for them, because I knew what it was like to live in those big houses, where it's basically just, every, something's broke, you know, it's complicated, there's always something that, you know... Uh, or there's a swimming, there's like a heated swimming pool. Yes. But no one swam in it exactly. in weeks. Yeah. And meanwhile, there's people, yeah, it, there's not an there's not a, a honoring or using the wealth that's there yeah. almost invariably. I don't know. It, 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 it's, 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 I mean, some of the most beautiful homes in this country sit empty very, very much of the time. Yes. Because they're owned by people who have two or three of them. Yeah. And they, you know, come and they go. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's part of the deal and, you know, until it isn't, whatever. But at some stage of the game, and, and I think what also happens is just basic integral theory. At this point, there's a world centrism that comes online where it's not just world centric. You know, orange is world centric in the sense that it can see systems of raw materials being shipped to the factory and then dispersed. And, you know, it can see a global system. But here you start feeling into the interiors using the integral map, the, the left-hand quadrants of the global system. And then it's just not okay to have a heated swimming pool that nobody's using, that's sitting there just burning uh, uh. gas or whatever it is and creating a global problem so that I can have a heated swimming pool that's broke half the time anyway. And it's just not it's okay. Just, it just doesn't just, feel good. You know, I'm realizing that I think there's transrational development where I remember what I knew what it felt like to love the land. Like I knew places that I'd swam that my kids can't swim in. Like I and not like, oh, this is a tragic thing for humanity. Like, that sucks. <laughs> that place was a blast. Like just uh, more descended uh, loving the land. And I remember 
the process of that. Ex- I was uh, living in trailer parks, or like my dad was in jail by the time I was six. But uh, my mom remarried a guy who just gotten out of the army, and it promptly got right back in the army because suddenly he's got two sons <laughs> and a pretty wife, and uh, and we flew. We got an airplane for the first time, and we we're in Germany. And it took me as an adult to kind of retroactively feel the love of the Ozarks, where I'm headed, and kind of that for that love to expand, to expand over that ocean, to this, uh, to actually love the planet, not as an idea or as an amber, like a that, that's the next thing to be a good person, but actually experience love for this planet enough to that not feel good anymore is one level. But I'm also getting the the wisdom of integral that we've left some of these early stages behind. Like I'm thinking about the million millions and millions of dollars estates where they've got the private golf course. I have never seen anyone golfing on it yet. And they know when they their kids' birthday party and, and the family came and suddenly all these rooms that haven't been occupied for years, people actually get to stay there, they know they've, that's the happiest they've felt in weeks or years or whatever. Uh, but if, the, if it's not robust in some of those earlier stages, it's also like, well, yeah, but then there's that unsaid stuff and there's like, and they trash something or it goes right back to it's sitting empty, but at least I know I succeeded and I have my, yeah. my golf course. Yeah, no, it's, it's something. And, you know, from an integral perspective, we, again, want the best of all of it. Yes. And so that's what I think we could maybe do now is, is just think in your own life. How is it that you are creating a vocation or part of a vocation or how are you even thinking about and, and relating to this where you are serving? You're actually helping the world. Really, it's not going to work unless that's happening. Sorry. Where you're expressing yourself and growing and shining. And contributing in that way that you actually can't help but to. Yeah, that only you can in a certain way. Yeah, your own special thing that is orderly, that has a plan, that is disciplined, that calls for you to do something in the morning when you wake up that you may not want to do. Uh, to go to your email, to write the letter, to whatever it may be, we need and you cows. do it whether you want to or not. I yeah. used to, I used to like purposely, milking the cows. Yeah, we Thank don't you. have cows to go feed in. Yeah. You don't. I, I used to park in the towaway zone on purpose when I was trying to get used to San Francisco culture to have something to have to. That I, I was like, okay, I know I'm getting up now. Yeah. If you've gotten a ticket in San Francisco, you know why. But I'm getting that totally. Yeah, absolutely, something you have to do. Yeah, and of course, for most of human history, you know, you didn't wake up and say, should I feed the chickens today? You know, should I milk the cows? Is this my authentic expression? Yeah. Uh, But wait, let's see what's on CNN. Or, you know, the the plants need to be watered. You know, whatever. You know, we just, just, or I want to call my friend, Mm. or let's go have coffee. Uh, We need this stage, people, right? We need this stage where it's just I am powerful. I am doing this. I make this claim. I put this stake in the ground. I'm going to make it happen. Fuck you. It's really important to be able to say fuck you. It's really important. Right? So we want to do that. And then we want to be with a team. We want to be part of something where people see us, where we see them where we feel connected, we're moving as a group. There's nothing more delicious than that. We've been saying integral community is, is a community in which everyone is known yeah. for their, their contribution they make. Yeah. Yes, it's super important. It's nothing like nothing. You notice that n- nothing will replace the pieces that, this, you know, that, that come online naturally. And then, you know, finally, are we paying the rent? Are we actually getting our food? Are we getting the roof over our head? Are we, you know, getting the, are we actually, you know, a, a going concern here? Or are we just gonna, you know, lay in the, 
ditch and let the saber-toothed tiger eat us. So, so that's what we, you know, that's how we want to think about this, um, this, this, the, you know, our vocation, our work. So what I'd like to do, it's, uh, you know, we, we spent an hour in the introduction, uh -huh. so that's good. Um, 